Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In a previous video, I talked about what to do with old company 401ks. Should you cash them out? Should you roll them to a current employer's 401k plan? Or should you roll them into a IRA? Now, if you had a traditional 401k, you have to go to a traditional IRA to roll over. However, there is something called a Roth IRA conversion, also called the backdoor Roth IRA. There's really two different ways to do this. We're gonna cover, it, uh, cover both in this video. First question though you might have is, is this legal? Well, back in 2010, Congress passed a law. They were trying to incentivize people to get money back into the marketplace. And uh, they created this tax loophole. And for a couple of years, people weren't sure what the status of this was. However, in 2018, Congress uh, just announced, they, they, they blessed this, this is okay. So if you go on all these investment banks websites, they advertise that you can do this. This is 100% legal. Now, just because you're allowed to do this this year doesn't mean in the future they could change the law. The law, the tax code could change at any point in the future. So if you're watching this video years from now, uh, definitely check to see if this uh, backdoor Roth IRA is still an option for you. If you're looking for a bank to partner with to get your Roth IRA on my channel, I always recommend either Vanguard, Fidelity, or Schwab. I have no referral links. They're not sponsoring this video. I just think they're quality banks that will uh, service you well. If you go on Fidelity's website, they have an article, you know, converting your traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. Have questions, call our 24-7 customer support line. Same thing with Vanguard, how to convert a Roth IRA online, do it yourself. And same thing with Schwab, the Roth IRA conversion process, what steps do you need to take? The next question you might have is who? Who should be taking advantage of the backdoor Roth IRA? And it's for people with uh, incomes greater than 139,000 single and 206,000 filing jointly. This is your modified adjusted gross income. So the way uh, the Roth IRA was written back when it was uh, made into law, they didn't want wealthy people uh, taking advantage of it to save on tax savings. Uh, in general, retirement accounts are supposed to be for the working class, for lower uh, income earning people, not just for already wealthy people to just avoid paying more taxes. However, with the legitimacy of the backdoor Roth IRA method, this pretty much all goes out the window and retirement accounts are for everyone. So if you make over 139 single or you plan to in the future, this technique is for you. I also want a quick mention there is a phase out period. You know, once you start making over 139, you can contribute a little bit, but for simplicity's sake, just assume 139 is the cutoff. Don't worry about uh, above that. Now, why the Roth IRA? If you're watching this video and you're not even familiar, why is the Roth IRA so amazing? Well, if you're under 50, you can contribute up to 6,000 per year. Once you're over 50, you can kick in an extra thousand, so that's 7,000 total. And you must have earned income to contribute. So you have to be working and show that you have earned income in order to be eligible to contribute to a Roth IRA. Once you're 59 and a half, you can start withdrawing from this account tax-free. Obviously, everything you put inside is uh, grows tax-free. And IRAs, uh, you have full control of your investments. So if you want to invest in crypto, individual stocks, REITs, gold, whatever you want, you can do that inside of your IRA. And the advantage of tax-free withdrawals from this account in the future, in my opinion and many people's opinion, is so advantageous because arguably tax rates today are at historic lows. When you think about the post-World War II period, what, what is the effective tax rate that the average American has been paying? It hasn't gone up. It's gone, there's been many tax cuts, few tax increases on the federal level anyways. So most people, uh, when they're younger, have more advantageous tax breaks. If you can claim children as dependents, if you have a mortgage, mortgage interest deduction. So you're more likely to be paying higher taxes when you're older if you retire wealthy. And that should be your goal. Your goal should be to retire comfortably. So if you have an IRA, a 401k, you're collecting social security, maybe you have a couple rental properties, you're bringing in income from that, maybe you started a small business or you do consulting on the side, potentially your tax burden in the future could be greater than it is today. And, and in that scenario, Roth IRAs are very advantageous for you. 
Now before I break down and explain what the backdoor Roth IRA process is, I must say that I am not a financial advisor, I am not a CPA. If you're making over $139,000 a year filing single, I highly recommend you hire a tax professional that you can talk to and meet with, and then they can explain to you what tax advantages are available to you. So if you're gonna do the backdoor Roth IRA conversion process, I, I recommend that you hire somebody to make sure that you filed all the paperwork correctly. Now with the backdoor Roth IRA conversion process, there's really two different scenarios that you need to be aware of. There is the easy one and then there is the difficult one. We're gonna start with the easy one because this is easy to understand. And I have to ask you, do you already have a traditional IRA? Any, any traditional IRA accounts? Traditional 401k, don't worry about that. That doesn't get included in this scenario. But if you already have a traditional IRA anywhere, then you're subject to the pro rata rule whenever you make a contribution. So this is gonna make things more complicated. But in the first scenario, we're gonna assume that you don't already have any funds inside of traditional IRAs. First, let's conceptualize what people are generally taught about traditional and Roth IRAs. Once again, this is how money is treated for tax purposes. Obviously, inside the accounts, you can invest however you want. So for traditional and Roth, let's pretend you want to contribute $1,300 to each of these accounts. Now, with Roth, you're told, well, you're gonna be paying taxes this year. What does that mean? What, what it means is you're actually just not getting a tax savings or a tax deduction for contributing to your retirement account this year. If you wanted to put in $1,300, you would, you would do that. But let's, let's assume that you're conscious enough, aware enough that you're gonna have an increased tax burden for contributing to this account. So you can't put in as much money. You're only gonna put in $1,000. Whereas with the traditional IRA, you're getting a tax savings this year. So you feel comfortable putting in more money. So $1,300. And let's assume after a period of time, you've gone to retire and the account has 10 x So that 1,300 you put in has now become 13,000. That 1,000 you put in has become 10,000. Now, when, when you go to withdraw it, and on a traditional IRA, you're agreeing to pay income tax in the future. So let's say, you know, it's a 30%, you're in the 30% tax bracket or whatever. You would lose that 3,000 to taxes so it should be a net neutral effect. In theory, these two accounts should be behaving the same. So for a traditional, you're getting a tax savings this year, so you feel like you can contribute more. Your account balance will be larger, however, you're gonna pay income tax in the future. Whereas with a Roth, you're not getting a tax savings, so this is post-tax money you're putting in. Then when you withdraw it, it's 100% tax-free. However, this is an oversimplified model, and this isn't precisely what is happening. When you think about what's actually happening, your employer doesn't know that you're contributing to a traditional IRA. The default is nobody is contributing to a traditional IRA. So they take taxes out of your check, assuming that you're gonna pay federal income tax on that money. So you actually do have uh, taxes withheld from your check. However, once you make the contribution to your traditional IRA, you then tell uh, the IRS on your annual taxes in order to claim that deduction. You will get that money back. So maybe you had 300 withheld from your check for this amount, and then uh, when you claim that you, that you uh, contributed traditional IRA, you'll get the deduction. You'll get that 300 back, and this has a net neutral effect. These two events cancel each other out. However, there is a little known rule that for traditional IRAs, there actually is an income limit to claim that deduction, not to contribute. Uh, it doesn't matter how much money you make in a year, you can always contribute to a traditional IRA. However, if you're, and this is really specific, if your employer offers a 401k plan, it doesn't even matter if you participate. If your employer offers a 401k plan, and you file single, and you make over 64,000 a year, then you actually are ineligible to claim this deduction. You won't get any tax savings for contributing to a traditional IRA. So within these two investment accounts, there are actually barriers. The first barrier that we are well aware of with the Roth IRA, you can't contribute 
if you make more than 139,000 single, 206,000 joint. With a traditional, you can contribute. There's no limitation on income for contributing. However, there is a limitation on claiming the deduction. So 64,000 for single, 103,000 for joint. So let's go through the entire process step-by-step step of how the backdoor Roth IRA works. Let's say you're gonna max it out, uh, $6,000 per year for an individual. So you're gonna put $6,000 into your traditional IRA. Now, this is a traditional IRA that is empty. Ideally, you just made it, and the current existing balance is $0. Usually when you make a contribution to your IRA, it takes two or three days for the funds to settle. As soon as those funds settle, you're gonna to wanna to go on your bank's website and start the conversion process. This is the back door where you're allowed to roll any funds in your traditional IRA into your Roth IRA, the full amount, 6,000. So in this scenario, you got around the contribution limits for the Roth IRA, and you never reached the uh, deduction limit for the traditional IRA. Uh, when you do this, you're gonna have to fill out a form 8606. This is really important. Uh, this is what it looks like. And right here on line three, in 2019, did you take a distribution from traditional SEP or simple IRAs or make a Roth IRA conversion? Uh, if you're feeling super confident, you can fill this out yourself. However, once again, I recommend you have a tax professional help you to make sure that you did everything correctly. And once that six grand is in your Roth IRA, you can just invest it like normal. Uh, over time, it'll grow and then you can take it out tax free. So what happened here is you, you, you put money into a traditional IRA, you got no tax savings. There's no tax savings when you put the money in the traditional IRA because you never got to the point where you claimed the deduction uh, on your taxes at the end of the year. And since you immediately moved that money from the traditional IRA to the Roth IRA, you get around this contribution limit wall and the money's just there. So for the life of the investments, you get tax-free growth. And then in the future, when you take the money out, you have tax-free withdrawals. Pretty amazing. Now, the second scenario depends if you already have money in a traditional IRA. This will trigger the pro rata rule. And real simple, if you have a Roth 401k, that can easily be rolled over into your Roth IRA. However, if you have a traditional 401k and you've rolled that into a traditional IRA, this can cause a problem. As I outlined in the earlier scenario, you don't want any funds in your traditional IRA. So what can you do? Well, if you have a job that offers a 401k, you can roll your traditional IRA into your traditional, your current employer's traditional 401k. This is a really easy way to zero out the balance in order to make the taxes uh, simple. The second thing you can do is if you've already rolled over a 401k into a traditional IRA, you can just bite the bullet and roll your traditional IRA into your Roth IRA. However, this will incur taxes. And, and if you're, if you're okay with this uh, to make things simpler in the future for you, it actually might be worth it just to take the bullet, pay all the taxes now, get it into your Roth IRA, and then guarantee in the future you won't be paying taxes on what you withdraw. So let's go through an example where it gets messy. And let's say that you already had $54,000 in a traditional IRA. You then made a $6,000 contribution with the intention of backdooring it into the Roth IRA. Well, because of the pro rata rule, you can't do this. You can't earmark contributions specifically to move them over to your Roth IRA. Because the total balance in the account is now $60,000 and you chose to roll over just 10% of that $6,000, you have to pay tax on 90% of what you rolled over. So if you're in the 30% tax bracket, 30% of uh, 5,400, which is 90% of 6,000, you'll have to pay $1,620 in taxes on your backdoor Roth IRA conversion. And that's not a good idea, that's not fun. Like, this is supposed to be after tax money already. You're already paying taxes on your income that you earned for this 6,000, and you're trying to get it to the Roth IRA and you, you ended up just having to pay taxes again. So once again, it's really important with your traditional IRAs that you zero out the account balance before you attempt this backdoor conversion process. Otherwise, you're gonna have to pay taxes twice. 
And there you have it guys, that is the backdoor Roth IRA process. Here it is step by step. Step one, you have to either open a Roth IRA if you don't already have one. If you already have one, that's fine. You can just add money to it. Step two is to open a traditional IRA or else uh, roll over the money currently in a traditional IRA into a current employer's 401k plan or just bite the bullet, pay the taxes, get that money over to the Roth side. Step three is to fund your traditional IRA, $6,000 a year. And as soon as that money settles after two or three days, immediately log on to your bank's website and convert it to your Roth IRA. Step five, you're gonna fill out the form 8606 for your annual taxes. Step six is to invest that money in your Roth IRA, buying either stocks, ETFs, mutual funds. Step seven is to repeat for your spouse. If you're married and you file jointly, uh, you both can do this independently of each other. Uh, so that's a great benefit. And then step eight, repeat it next year. Keep doing it. And there you have it, guys. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about finance and investing issues. If you have any comments or questions or if I missed something, let me know in a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. Until the next video, take care.